Did you know it's technically possible to be non-tax resident anywhere and as a result pay zero income taxes on your entire worldwide income? In this video, I'm gonna explain it to you exactly how this works. So when it comes to residency, each different country has their own separate criteria. So as you know, in the UK, we've got the established statutory residency test, which outlines a number of days that you can bro broadly be in the UK along with your ties before becoming UK resident. For most people that are looking at structuring their wealth internationally, um, the number of days you can be in the UK range anywhere from say 45 upwards to up about 182 if you've not been in the UK for previous years and you've not got any UK ties. But for a lot of people, for most people who've got companies overseas, they're working for their overseas uh, business, running their business still from an overseas location, Jersey, Isle of Man, Dubai, you can typically be in the UK for about 90 days per tax year without being a UK resident. And the question for a lot of people is, well, okay, well, where do I spend the rest of the year? So you can spend 90 days, about three months in the UK. How about the rest of the year? Um, and we've got clients that they literally just spend two or three months in loads of different countries. So, you know, three or four countries across the course of the year. Um, and actually a strictly non-tax resident in no country. So when you look at the residency applications for, okay, if they're in Spain, if they're in Dubai, if they're in the UK, if they're over in the States, well, actually, as a result, because they spend such a few a number of days in each of those jurisdictions, neither, none of those countries actually deem them to be resident. And this can be quite powerful because as a result, none of those countries has the right to tax you on your income because you're a non-tax resident there. So as a result, you can actually benefit from paying zero income taxes on your income and gains because of the way that you've structured your year in that you are just traveling a lot. You're not spending enough time in a country to be tax resident. So what would this actually look like for you in practice? Well, the first thing you need to do is identify what countries you want to visit. Um, and basically maximize the number of days you can be in each country and make sure that you are just below the criteria for being tax resident in there. So say for instance, Spain, you, can, you are usually tax resident if you spend 183 days or more in Spain, or you have Spain as your kind of place of natural abode, your main base. So if your, your main residence is there, or if your main bank accounts, your investments, your companies, then even if you were to spend less than 183 days, you might still be tax resident in Spain and face the rather nasty tax bills unless you're under something such as the Beckham Law um, and you've got some kind of tax advantage status. So up to 182 days for most people in Spain, easily done unless you've got a Spanish visa, just because especially if you've got a UK passport, you've got the 90 day rule. Um, so you know, it's pretty easy to stay under that amount of time, but for most people that's the three months in the summer, you can be in Spain, you've not got to worry about paying taxes there, you're out of the UAE heat, as everybody says, you know, the UAE is hot, dusty desert, all that kind of stuff, um, the popular criticism about Dubai, but that's the great thing is you're not in Dubai for those summer months. The UK, of course, under the statutory residency test, but for most people, it's around the 90 day mark as well. So you've got another three months potentially in Spain. Um, and then for someone like the UAE, if you want to be tax resident in the UAE, which for a lot of our clients is beneficial because of course, being non-tax resident nowhere, or anywhere rather, that is, it's, it's not a gray area, but it could be subjective. So for a lot of people that do want certainty over their tax position, actually ensuring that they meet the criteria and conditions for being a tax resident in the UAE is helpful, especially then you can get your tax residency certificate from the FTA, which might help with any um, tax treaties or anything, anything that you've got going on there with the HMRC or any other tax authorities to say, we are tax resident here, so we want this tax advantage status. Whereas if you were tax resident nowhere, then that would not be possible to get um, as a result of that, which might just lead to a lot more back and forth with the relevant tax authorities when it comes to proving your case. But for the UAE, um, you know, they've got a couple of condition, uh, conditions here. So a natural person will be considered a UAE tax resident if the individual has their usual or primary place of residence and their center of financial and personal interest in the UAE. Again, it's all about kind of where is your home effectively? Where's your home when it comes to your main residence? Where were your bank accounts with your investments? And ultimately, where, is, where are your business interests? And that will be a factor when it comes to determining the country that you're resident in or was physically present in the UAE for a period of 183 days or more during a consecutive 12 month period. Again, 183 days rules, a lot of countries do have this test. Or was physically present in the UAE for a period of 90 days or more in a consecutive 12 month period and the individual is a UAE national, holds a valid residency permit or holds a member of a national activity GCC member state where he or she has a permanent place of residence in the UAE or he or she carries on an employment or business in the UAE. 
So for some people, it is potentially possible to spend as little as 90 days in the UAE and have a valid tax residency there, which means you can get your documentation from the FTA over in Dubai to confirm that you are a valid taxpayer here in the UAE. For a lot of our clients, that's certainly what they do is they do spend the majority of the year in the UAE, a little bit of time in Spain, Europe, Italy, south of France, um, and then a couple of months in the UK. But you know, with the state of the UK at the minute, we are seeing a lot of people spending a lot less time in the UK and actually selling it for good. Compared to where we were about a year or two ago, a lot of people were maintaining their UK second homes on the promoter that they were going to be maximizing those 90 days with a view of more days once you've been non-resident for a number of years and actually continue coming back to the UK because they like it. However, especially with our wealthier clients, London apartments, a lot of them have said that actually, you know, we are selling up in London now and fully relocating, usually between Spain, UAE, um, and a couple of other countries as well, because of the way that the UK is being run at the minute, because of the decline and just you know, lack of safety and everything else that you know we, we go on about a lot on this channel. Um, so a lot of clients, a lot less time in the UK, more time in the UAE, more time in Spain, um, Italy, Greece, Turkey, all of those fantastic countries, a lot of time there. Um, living, working, but ultimately having their tax base in somewhere such as the UAE. If you want to find out more how we can help you plan your freedom from taxes and build international wealth, watch my free training in the comments below. If you found this video useful, also give it a thumbs up and smash that like button. Bye for now.